wait another five minutes before I call the meeting one way or the other. And if you folks are amenable, since there are no action items that require a vote, we can just whip through the agenda. Sounds good. Just bring everybody, you know, give everybody updates. So, Deb, are you from the Norfolk or from the Baltimore area? So, I'm originally from New York. Okay. Yay. Yeah, I was, born, <laughs> I was born in Manhattan. Yay. Pretty much raised out in Westbury on Long Island. Okay. And I uh, went back to Manhattan. We're going to go ahead, Picture but book. there's no it was really so important beautiful. action items to oh, vote on, so we're just. Well, the funny okay. thing is, and I knew every I knew every um, repair mechanic in town. I had a little MG, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, and it would, would get so cold <laughs> that it would pop the oil, and well, I'd dump all my oil out, and they'd have to pick me up and mm -hmm. fill me back up with oil, and I was like, this is just miserable. Okay, it's two oh five. Let's see. Okay, it's. Um, hey, just a moment, please. Sure. Um, it's 2.05 on Wednesday, August 11th, 
Uh, my name is Joan Jennings. I'm the chair of the Public Art Committee. We are in the second floor media room at City Hall. Um, uh, Marissa, can you call the roll, please? Yes. Ms. Jennings? Here. Ms. Gregory? Mr. Meals? Here. Ms. Robinson? Mr. Sallow? Mr. Stackhouse? Here. Ms. Hennessy? Here. Okay, um, we do, well, first I'd like to introduce uh, Debbie Hennessy, who's going to be our alternate number two, joining Mr. Stackhouse in the bullpen over there. We'll hold the stand <laughs> over here. We got this. Yeah. Okay, um, since we don't have a quorum, we cannot vote, but um, we are going to just go through the agenda to give everybody an update. Um, the Girl Scout Ambassador Troop 1142 Public Art Project, the Storm Drains. Uh, Marissa, I believe that's proceeding. We did we we gave them some money for some, um, you know, safety vests and uh, paint. Correct. Uh, that's in progress. Right. I don't believe they've been paid just yet, but it is in progress. Okay. Uh, the Tarpon Springs High School mural project for Sunset Beach is deferred until fall of 2021. Um, Mike Elwell was tabled, and uh, uh, Marissa, from now on, it can be omitted from the agenda as a table item. Uh, sport, sports field mural project, Bill. Yeah, we took a look at a couple of the, uh, the options. The, a little bit of crossover with the illuminated art boxes, because we were talking about other locations. And actually, Sisler Field has uh, a couple of light stand poles mm -hmm. that, that would work uh, for two-sided uh, for, for people walking back and forth through the area, mm -hmm. and a number of places where you could put uh, a single side, um, so you couldn't get the benefit of both both sides. Mm -hmm. But you know, I guess we would have to decide if we were going to make it more of a historic look back at the field, or actually go out for a cult of artists, or mm -hmm. maybe a baseball theme, or or something along those lines okay. because of the baseball park. Mm -hmm. So there are some opportunities uh, next. Our next meeting, I will have uh, pictures for everybody. Mar Marissa tried to get the, those up today. It was my fault because I didn't give them ahead of time. Okay. So she now has them for next <laughs> meeting, and we will uh, put them up so everybody, so we can walk through and we can look at the different locations. There's some problems with uh, tree canopy with, with any of the solar. Right. Um, you know, that's not going to work, but th there's some options there. Um, also, we took a look at, uh, and I think David supplied a mural uh, in Photoshop, um, I, I only had paint on my computer, which didn't give me much uh, much to work with. Mm -hmm. But when I tried to take a look at some of the buildings and make them the primary colors, wow, they really, uh, they, they were overwhelming. So, you know, it may be something where we take small pieces and, and, and go with some of the primary colors. And maybe the larger buildings that we're going to put murals on, um, and maybe we go with a, a white gray or the white and, and the, uh, the, the beige color that they currently have. Thank you, Marissa. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. And she comes through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> always. Yeah, always. Um, Thank you. I think we would completely lose any artwork that we would put on the buildings if we went with those strong primary colors on them. So uh, in hindsight, that's, that's probably... Okay. And you can see, you know, example at the bottom of the one page, you, mm -hmm. that's Riverside Park, right. uh, the concession stand up there. And it's a, it's a great location. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're going by there now, the, the, the number of parents and, and children there with football and soccer, every night it's just packed. Right. So I think there's a great opportunity for, for Riverside. And also Sisler has some, some opportunity. The other thing, if you take a look at the pictures there, I'll call them bollards because I don't know what else you want to call right. them, but they're, they're white uh, and they're throughout the parking area and throughout the park. I think there's a tremendous opportunity to mm -hmm. do something with mm -hmm. them. Right. Okay, I, I don't know what, but uh, something could be, right. someone creative could come up with something right. um, uh, for this. So we're looking at the sporting parks that we have throughout the city and there are opportunities for us to, to move forward. But I think we'll have to be a little bit more concise with, you know, what we're looking for before we put a call to artists right. together on that. Okay. It was also suggested that uh, we approach the uh, parents who are in charge of the different leagues. 
get some feedback from them about what they might want to see or more importantly not see done on the athletic fields. So um, I asked Connor Donovan, who's very involved in youth sports, to reach out. I haven't heard back from him yet, so I'll, you know, I'll email him again. Um, Okay, I guess give some thought to, uh, you know, hardwired art, art boxes at Sisler. And uh, I think last time we did discuss, you know, at least from the get-go, was putting some historic images in, you know, which I think, you know, since, you know, there is that tie-in. And, uh, uh, you know, maybe do the second round with a baseball theme once people get used to seeing them up. Yeah. How does, uh, Robert? Uh, how how much is Sisler Field used? I mean, what's the what's the usage of it uh, as far as foot traffic or, or or pedestrian count around it? Is it is it pretty? <laughs> it's pretty heavily used. Yeah. 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 There's games most nights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I've never been by it actually. Yeah. Right. I, I go past it every day. Yeah. 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 I love it. Right. Well, the other thing too is I think last last time we mentioned um, getting that young lady who did the uh, Monica. Yeah, the the uh, mural in Sisler Field to continue it around the building. Yeah. I don't know if we or at least have something continued because you really can only see it when you're going west. Right. On, or if she on yeah, but the, she, the theme is nice, and if she could do it. something with mm -hmm. uh, you know like softballs that was mentioned last time. So, I, I, you know, not having <clears throat> school age children, I don't know like how many um, sports commissions there are I mean there's obviously a, a baseball one I don't know if there's like a baseball softball, softball right. soccer Football. so Football. right so Football I guess one. that's what um, you know was suggested is to get I guess the powers that be once you have the you know the artwork mm -hmm. um, vetted and then you know go ahead and just pass it by right them you know kind of thing but I don't have those contacts um, but you said Connor did, right? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I reached out to him. So. Okay. so there's a lot of opportunity, and mm -hmm. it's city-owned property, and so it checks off a lot of the boxes. boxes. Plus, it's spread out throughout the community, which gets our exposure and public mm -hmm. art out there. And I, I, I think. Uh, can, can I just add something? something that you said, Bill, that that uh, it would be hard to put a mural on a a bright red wall. Um, actually, you, you take the right green or the right yellow, uh, or you know, not green, uh, right blue or right yellow on that. You get you get a color theory thing happening. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll get a vibrancy that you wouldn't expect. Yeah. So I mean, it would have to be kind of a almost a silhouette of a mm. ball player, for instance, uh, in a particular blue against a. A true red mm -hmm. that you'd get, you'd get uh, sort of like sound does to you in, in jazz or something like that. Mm -hmm. you know, you, it, it becomes physical, it, right? It, so there is a way. I mean, if you're saying if if you sort of looked at it and saw how vibrant the, the colors can be, right? It is possible with with instructions to anybody if you want to have a call for artists for that mm -hmm. to say right, now this is going to be on a vibrant red background or a vibrant blue background or a vibrant yellow background and how do you put some image on that that, that really <coughs> works you know it's it's a so all the color theory stuff that yeah. every artist sort of learns in, right. in, in college. Well, I think the one f um, concession stand there at Riverside is a great sample because it's large enough mm -hmm. and it's got the appeal from a distance. You can right. see it the whole way from yeah. sunset. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about, about this one right yeah, Yes, on the and there's two yeah. photos of it yeah. there at the Especially bottom. With the roof, imagine, so with somebody, the roof lines. I, I tried to take paint, cool. mm -hmm. you, just the, the very basic yeah. paint program, and I added the color to it, and it's like, wow. Yeah, okay, yeah, so, but I'm not that guy. Yeah. So if yeah. somebody has Photoshop and can... Yeah, somebody with Photoshop, put, put yeah, I'm not Photoshop either. I mean, put put yellow here and put blue there or red there right. or something mm -hmm. like that. You get really a strong sense of, uh, you know, it's a celebration of that space other than painting it. White, you know, and gray. white and gray. Right. Well, gray. We have a lot of beige in our city. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. That's, that's why I was trying to even go to the gray a little bit, and, you know, to get and kind of move away from some of the beige. We have a right. lot of beige. There's something, you know, that you could you could put a, a symbol of a baseball bat or a baseball glove or a, right. something like that on it. That's a simple image, 
uh, that's that's very graphic. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it, you know that that an artist could, in in a way, really be interested in working on a really strong color ground, right. color background, and then matching it with its complementary color. I mean, you get you, you can get some zinging things happening. I defer mm. to the artists in our group. Okay, okay. Right. You know, if, if, if I think that's pretty tricky, and it, it's going to be have to be managed pretty close because I think yeah. you could miss the mark. Right. If, if but I, I still say that uh, you know that you could take a wall and say, All right, let's just do a mural on it. You know, like like uh, uh, I I still laugh at the softball because the softball is just a bigger baseball. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and the baseballs are already the size of basketballs. Right. <laughs> so, I know. I know. I mean, uh, but if they, if if you wanted to, with that artist, extend that concept, you could go to bats, a whole pile of bats. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just just uh, like pickup sticks or bats or something like mm-hmm. that. I can see that. Yeah, that's that. an interesting that's, idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gloves, cleats. Yeah, go, anything, yeah, any, yeah. Right. anything, any paraphernalia that's pretty easily identifiable. Right. Uh, as as an extension of that particular mural, but I think, I think the different colors will stand on their own. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a whole series, so yeah, there's a whole whole movement of art in the mid 20th century of just, you know, uh, you know, who's afraid of red, yellow, and blue? Mm-hmm. I mean, that famous painting, size of this wall right here, yeah. one, red, one red, one yellow, and one blue. Mm-hmm. You know, so, uh, um, I, you know, I, I think that's just as much art as any kind of an image in, mm-hmm. in some ways. And, and it, you know, that's something that Tartan could get known as, as being, you know, really very colorful. I, right. and, so, and the primary is, is really important, I think, because they're, they're the colors that everything's made out of. Right. And if you go into the secondary, you start start getting into almost, uh, you know, it gets too complex. And then you, so if you go into the tertiary, then you have a political image. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so I think people would, would object to that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not saying it's a political image, but I think it's a symbolic right. image of, of uh, the rainbow colors. Mm-hmm. And and this the the primary colors are just that. All colors come from these three. Right. Everything comes from this. Is it possible that somebody can take Photoshop and try maybe this building so we can get a, a sense of? I mean, who who can we turn to that that's got that photo? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you need it electronically? <laughs> yeah. And Diane, could you forward, because I know Bill can't, could you forward the the, the image of the uh, concession stand, and I'll play with that. Yeah. Side. I think the roof line is really interesting, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's so much building. that you can actually do in this ease mm-hmm. up above the, the first roof to the second roof. Right. And, and that's baseball, or, or excuse me, football and soccer there. Mm-hmm. It's just strong. Both sports. Right. It's a great park. Okay. River, you well, said Riverside and Sisler? Uh, well, that's Riverside. That's Riverside. That's Riverside, Riverside right. These two bottom ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the Sisler where you're talking about. If you need to anything, let me know and I can send it right. to you and you can send it to her and okay. they can send it to. Can I ask a question? <laughs> sure. How much do the double sided light boxes cost? I know it's solar and one's electrical wiring, but right. Um, what do they run? Diane, was the was the hard wired about seven hundred? Mm. Because there was the twenty. The the we look. We were looking at different sizes, like a smaller size. Because I think the yeah. thirty by thirties, which are down on the, they're solar. Right. I think right. they were about what twelve hundred. Yeah, I, it's been a while since I looked at it, but I know. Yeah, we purchased yeah. those over a year ago. Okay. Yeah. Mm. It, they should be in some of the back minutes. Okay. So, um, but yeah, we could send it to you on. I, I was just curious. Yeah, don't yeah. Go to, don't go to any trouble. Uh, yeah. No, I know that the uh, the hard hard wired boxes were uh, much less expensive. Expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. because they were. The hard wire is something that they can produce. The solar work all custom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and then since they did the, um, you know, we did give them different sizes. Um, Public Works did go ahead and uh, figure out like what poles could handle the different weights. So right. they now have a good idea, you know, of the type of pole you would need for mm-hmm. a particular size. So right. that's good. Yeah. So, because I think we were talking about doing some smaller, mm-hmm. hardwired ones. 
you know, and again, you know, as Bill mentioned, uh, you know, you get the tree canopies, tree canopy, yeah. which right. kind of, you know, doesn't help the solar recharging. I think Marissa okay. has a point. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else on the uh, sports fields? Let me ask one question. The Bill. You, you're up close with the, uh, the, the clubhouse <laughs> thing, this thing right. here. Which Do you one? know what okay. the roof was? Uh, yeah, it's shingle. Say, it was you? shingle. Okay. <laughs> they can't really mess with that. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only thing, if they need a replacement at some time, they yeah. were to go metal. Yeah, no, that's got to. You know that that would give you some flexibility, right. but it's shingle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> do we have we moved at all with the the young lady giving us anything more for the the Sisler? Mural? Yeah, when I reached out to her, she gave me that one rendering, and. Um, you know, we didn't go with it, and then she started traveling, and, um, you know, she said she wasn't interested in doing a second version at the time, so I could reach out to her again and just find out, but I know that the feedback that we got originally from that was that, you know, they wanted, people wanted something that was specifically softball related because it was baseball on the front side or bats i mean or you know gloves. sure or, you know I, I i you know to just do but i'll reach out to her again um or we could put out another call to artists you know um but i know you wanted kind of more of a consistency on that right but i mean if we can't if we can't do it we can't do it right you know okay. and as robert pointed out i mean a softball's just yeah. a big baseball <laughs> it's a little <laughs> a bit larger ball. yeah so the only thing you could do is put Spalding softball on it. Right. You know, <laughs> I think really the only difference, of course, size yeah. is the, the, the stitching. Mm -hmm. So most most softballs have a whitish or grayish stitching instead of the red, instead stitching. Of the red stitching. They get just yes, paint so. over it. Yeah. <laughs> paint over a couple of them. Right. Yeah, I actually asked her, you know, she, could she modify, mm -hmm. you know, the the one she want she had, and of course, I guess that's a sin to ask any artist to do that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but uh, she was like, no, no, I've got this. That's the thing about about if I can just finish this mm -hmm. this up, just this one thing that I've said. I, I, I think this is one of the things that I like about the primary colors is it doesn't require an artist. Mm -hmm. Uh, what did what did you know? It, it's something where we could, we could allocate the funds for the paint, and maybe even get volunteers. You know, get get uh, high school kids or some mm -hmm. groups or something like that to paint these. Right. And and uh, but they have to be painted well. You know, they they have to be taped mm -hmm. so that you have a good edge. And, uh, right. Uh, but I you know I can see that is that that's something that the city can maintain. Mm -hmm. you know, it could be city staff doing it, or it could be right. volunteer groups or whatever doing it. So it doesn't require a call for artists to do it. It re just requires some allotment of, of a budget right. for these particular paints. Because they probably, I, I imagine they cost more than the regular beige paint that they use or whatever right. they use over and over again. Right. Okay. Well, I think we've got some homework to do. Any other comments about the sports field before we move on to the illuminated art boxes? Okay. Um, we got all of the uh, second round images and I processed them there. I gave them to Marissa today. I think there's one that I would like to get a better quality. It's that, you know, button fish, you know, it's, uh, so, uh, we have been in touch with, um, Alan, the printer, and he sent us a, um, revised, um, uh, invoice for just doing the, the decals because we, he doesn't have to buy the, the vinyl again. And, uh, I think it was, what was it, 1720? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's not bad to replace all, you know, 30 images. So, um... What I suggested is a staggered installation of the replacement panels. In other words, doing all of the east-facing panels first, you know, and then what he has to do is he has to remove the decals using a heat process, probably a, a hair dryer, and then reapplying the decals for the new images. And then when the east-facing panels are reinserted, they can remove the west-facing panels. So that would save on some manpower and then replace that, and so it would take three passes 
to uh, replace the images. One to remove the panels, one to replace. replace and remove, and then the other is replace. Can you clarify to me why they're being replaced? The whole pr purpose of these was to have to have them moving yeah, a, an yeah. ongoing Cycling. okay there you go thank you right yeah revolving, because it's revolving art thank you okay art. yeah because it's meant to be like a walkable art gallery okay so Give other people opportunity to submit pieces that they can that's have. great okay right so um yeah we got uh 87 diane 57 57 for 30 images but this time we limited each artist to two submissions last time we didn't and we got 132 or something and what's their span of time that they stay um but they, they'll be up about a year i think we put them up last october so they'll be replaced about 12 months yeah so you know every time we have a season and people come down and all the images will be that's refreshed. Nice. That's a great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Any, any questions about the, uh, oh, and uh, Debbie, we, we vetted all of the images, you know, uh, they were all like artist identification was taken off and we voted on the, the 30 of the 57 to, uh, to, to be installed. Okay. Project updates. Christopher Stell, Advent Health. I guess that's that's still ongoing. That's the only thing I can say. Yeah, I think he's probably pretty much done. And right. Just with the the COVID and the hospital and everything, because the hospital has canceled a few events mm -hmm. related to it. So I think yeah, you know it's ongoing. Right. Okay. Now the Black Heritage Project. Um, <coughs> Uh, thanks to Diane and Marissa, Marissa. the <laughs> call to artists went out yeah. on Monday morning. So um, uh -huh. it was posted on Cafe. Yeah. And, nice. uh, you know, it's, uh, it's meant to be distributed. So uh, I believe you all got the link to the Cafe posting. So, you know, please get it out as much as you can. Um, the one thing that uh, the comment that came back is, um, and uh, Diane and I discussed that we'll put it in the appendix, is the um, site, site plan, you know, some photographs and some maybe your GIS maps as to where the, you know, the pieces will go. So uh, we have a couple of people interested already, so I, I'm very enthusiastic. And once it was published, I did mail it off to the Department of Agriculture, so let's keep our fingers crossed that we get a grant from them. Robert? Um, we, we read CAFE all the time, and there's one comment about the proposal that's a little confusing. Now, uh, Carol read it, mm -hmm. and she said, is the $135,000 for each one or one only? And how does that, you know, that... That was confusing to her right. in, in reading this. So it sounds like there's two sculptures. Is it the same person doing two sculptures, or is it two different people doing two sculptures? Mm -hmm. As if she were applying for this, she wouldn't know whether to submit for both locations mm -hmm. or just one location or, or what. I mean, it, 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 right, I it's hear you. a little confusing in that respect, in that... Right. It, it should be, uh, what's half of one? Uh, eight, well, yeah. 60. Should be 60 some odd per sculpture. Right. right. In, in a way. Right. Because that's going to be a big important thing to anybody who wants to make the, a presentation right. to it. Because they see that, that bigger number and they think, well, I can do it for that. But no, i got to do two of them. Right. Okay, so it's yeah. Uh, yeah, the idea was to have them complement each other, so I think there was an assumption that it would be the same artist, but it was an assumption. You're right. It has well, to it's, be... It's, it's hard on the other end. You know, sure. To, yeah. No, thank you for, for pointing yeah. that out. That's, that's important. Marissa, can we make uh, any changes? I believe so. We can edit yes. it. Okay. So um, the budget line specifically in CAFE, I can't put more information right there. Right, it's right. It's still going to have to say $135,000, but deeper in the call where the budget is outlined a little bit more, we can add a line right. that uh, references two sculptures at, what was it, $67,000 each. Right. 
Um, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be sculptures, but two, two, two projects. Two works. Yeah, two works, right. Mm -hmm. I can definitely so, do that. Thank you. Yeah. So, so two things we look at first. One, we look at a budget. <laughs> of course. The budget is the thing that sort of says, all right, we're going to look further. Right. And then the second thing we look at for is uh, where's it going to be? Right. And what's, well, it, what's it going to look like? What's the site for this? Its site, yes. What's right. the site going to be? So uh, that that should be uh, updated. As, right. As that's what that's what possible. I just that's what I just Cause, said. Because I can't I can picture the sponge docks. I cannot picture the other thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. We we discussed it, and Diane and I we've both been a little under the weather, but we're going to make plans to, you know, as I just mentioned, get you know a GIS map and some some photographs of the two sites, and you know. You know, update, update everything. It would be pretty cool though if one artist did, like a sister piece. You know, where it was, you know, like a, a table and chair, you know, kind of thing. And it's like mm -hmm. one piece went, in one location, the other. But there's a story behind right. it or something. I don't know. It could, yeah, it could go either way, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so we have our homework, Diane. We've got to get the go know. out there. Okay. I'm ready. So I tried to figure out exactly where it would be on Martin Luther King Boulevard, and it seems as if it's just empty lots. Uh, there's that, it's the right stretch? near the. Uh, there's a bus stop. There's Walton Avenue, and it's pretty much empty lots. Correct. Yeah. We just have to make sure what is city property and what's county property. Right. Yeah, that's why. That's why we have to go back to the GIS map. Yeah, make sure we're, you know, we're getting the right, right spot. Okay. So, oh, and the other thing too is, uh, as we mentioned last month, uh, one of the stalwarts on our selection panel, Dudley Sally, passed away, and um, his replacement is Nicolet. Uh, Henderson, who's, uh, I think, a lifelong resident of Tarpon Springs, and she was a history teacher at Tarpon Springs High School, as was her husband. So, I think they bring a, a you know, a lot to the project. Um, new business. Does anybody have any? Just any any comments on? I thought it was real interesting the email from that was passed on from Lucy Ann mm -hmm. with uh, the Stephen. Stephen Oliver. Yeah. Right. I, I thought that was, I didn't know if we were going to talk about that or, you know, if that, that was just informational. Just to pass it on, yeah. Okay. Right. I have been in contact with him. I sent him to the link, and just like Robert pointed out, he wanted some site information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, you know, mea culpa, I missed that one. If you, you know. want to see what he's done, if you go down to Gulfport, right in front of the casino, Mm -hmm. he, has a, he has a piece there. Right. He also has a t-shirt business. Mm -hmm. And Carol and I actually used him for our t-shirts for our show. Oh, nice. Here okay. at Carmel. So we know him. Mm -hmm. He's a really nice guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. It was kind of an interesting article. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, you know, one of the issues, of course, is the good old sunshine laws, you know, I mean, I, I know I can reach out to artists, but then I can't tell you guys I've reached out to artists. So, and I believe I've been copying you in, right, Diane, mm -hmm. on all of my correspondence with him? Um, uh, no, but... Yeah, cause, well, I think I basically just sent him the just, link to the call. Right, 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 you know. that's it. And, you know, I think he did come back to me about requesting the site information, so that's a, that's a flaw that will have to be corrected. Mm -hmm. So, thank you all. Um, so, no new business? I did. Um, um, I was outside, so I'm not sure whether you all talked about this, but the Girl Scouts project, um, <clears throat> they reached out now that they're back at school, mm -hmm. and um, they did work with our public works guys, and they um, did get two um, locations approved. One was at Live Oak near the Splash Park, mm -hmm. and the other one is near Craig Park. So what they're going to do is order the supplies, get started, mm -hmm. you know, on that, and then they're going to put it, all the supplies into a um, 
kind of like an intuit tote that can mm -hmm. be then passed on to oh, the that's next a good idea. group of kids. Mm -hmm. But instead of us, you know, doing a $500 check to them, what she said they would do is they would go ahead and get their supplies and then give us an itemized bill, you know, for them. And she said, you know, it may be less than 500 So I thought, well, that was very considerate. Yeah, that's you know? Well, I'll, I'll just repeat what I said when they made their presentation. They're probably one of the most professional groups we yeah, worked with. It was with. awesome. They it was amazing. awesome. Yeah, so. so kudos to them. I mean, yeah, wow. I mean, a model for lots of different mm -hmm. yeah. groups. So that was it. And then uh, you asked me to, to talk about the NIAID st statute. Yeah, that's going to be the city announcement. So go ahead. Um, no, we've, um, uh, they did um, pick up the statue, and um, apparently they have to come up with a way to. It's, it's just got a, a small piece and it makes them move. There's another one that's in Jeopardy too. And so they're working on a way to adhere it somehow to concrete and then possibly go ahead and embed that so then it's flush, you know, like the other ones and uh, come back and, and do that. So I told him that, you know, we do need his estimate on all that because we have to put it in for insurance, so. Um, they don't do things really quickly, but um, I'm hoping that, you know, we can get that soon. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I sent him a text on Monday, and he hasn't responded. But I did go over and uh, meet him at the, uh, the garages where the statue was being stored, and uh, she didn't look happy. She was lying there on her back with her arms out. <laughs> they and, are uh, very busy. I, have to, mm -hmm. I, I can attest to that. I mean, uh, Desmond just... Uh, um, finished curating a major show at the uh, at, at the uh, James Museum ah, okay. uh, for the uh, um, the African American Museum, and he's put been putting that show together, and working on a catalog for it and stuff like that. Oh, so, okay, yeah. So that's... they're doing that. Plus, they're let me see, they're they're maintaining a number of uh, Jehulis across the country. Mm -hmm. I think just uh, a day or two ago, they were up in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're 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 out and about, right. and uh, it's not that they're just sitting there, right? Know. Yeah. Actually, I saw I saw the naiad in the back of their vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't call the police on them. <laughs> <laughs> he goes around with them. <laughs> <It's great. laughs> well traveled. Right. <laughs> just so we don't see her on since New Jersey somewhere. I know, yeah. <laughs> Hanging off a bridge. <laughs> I could just see stolen vehicle with an eye at it, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, good times. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> all so uh, let's see. It's two thirty-eight. Unless anybody has any other comments, proposals, questions, I think we can adjourn. Marissa, uh, we didn't talk about the minutes from the past meeting. We can't vote on them because we don't have a quorum. Okay. So we'll have to uh, pile them up for uh, the next meeting. I did think of that, oddly enough. <laughs> I just wanted it on Rick. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, a, you know, for any action item and votes, we need a full quorum, so. Okay, it is 2.39, and the meeting is adjourned. Awesome. Thank you all.